Hello. I'm finally back. <laughs> Sorry for the um, not being around for the last couple of months. Um, I know I promised to be back um, more regularly, um, but um, health issues um, got in the way. My name is Lisa, and you can find me on Instagram as Lisa Loves Stitching. And this is my podcast, Lisa Loves Stitching. I do a knitting related podcast as well as floss tube, um, as I've recently taken up cross stitch again um, after a 20 year hiatus. And yeah, so I changed my name to reflect both um, because I, I like to do all sorts of crafts, so I don't want to um, stick myself in a box, so to speak. So, what's been happening? The last time I spoke to you, we went um, on holiday to Tasmania, which was amazing. Uh, we had a really, really lovely time, except for... First, we, I'll just start from the beginning. We um, left Brisbane and flew down to Melbourne and had a couple of days in Melbourne looking around. And then we got the picked up our camper van and... Um, then we drum, got the ferry across, which takes 15 hours overnight, to Devonport. Um, so if you're not from Australia and you're not familiar with the geography, Tasmania is um, a state of Australia and it sits off the mainland um, at the southern tip, um, just below Victoria. So we got the ferry across to uh, Devonport and I don't normally get seasick but we had two to three metre swells and all I can say is I will not be getting the ferry again. <laughs> I basically sat, thank God we had a deluxe suite, but I basically sat, or both of us, and watched the horizon for 15 hours and I can't even tell you how happy I was when I saw Devonport come into view. I was like, get me off this ship, I'm out of here. Anyway, we had a really nice time in Devonport. We stayed at a beautiful B&B. It was like a studio apartment. It was very luxurious and, and lovely and right on the beach. So we had a nice walk along the Pebble Beach, which was different for us because normally we're used to sandy beaches up north. And um, then we headed the next, like we only stayed overnight there. And then the next day we headed straight down in the van to Hobart because we wanted to spend most of our time in Hobart. So we had one night in the caravan park outside of Hobart and then we dropped the van off the next day and picked up our hire car. And after that we headed into our um, apartment that, we, that Wayne had organised at Sandy Bay which was amazing. It had spectacular views over the bay and um, it was in a place called Sandy Bay and we were up in the hills and we had a perfect view off our veranda of the bay at one side and Mount Wellington straight ahead of us and it did have a bit of snow on on the top so the next morning we actually went up to Mount Wellington in our hire car and there'd been a bit of snow overnight so we had some fun walking around there and enjoying the snow because we don't get to do that very often and we got to wear our knits because it doesn't really get cold in Queensland and um, Wayne wore his new um, hat that I knit him but anyway you can watch that on the knitting podcast when I get around to uploading that one <laughs> so um, we had a lovely few days in um, Hobart and while I was there we happened to have a knitter workshop called a stitch in time which was just down in the main street at Mint Sandy Bay which is like two minutes drive from our apartment so I, I got to go there twice <laughs> and it was a lovely little shop and it was just below street level and it was really tiny and cozy but it was packed to the rim with floss, buttons, patterns, fabric, accessories, you name it. It's all squished in there but it was so lovely and they even had an open fire going which would just made it even more cozy. I really would have loved to have, if they had a lounge chair there I probably would have sat there for hours so yeah it was really lovely and I bought some um, treats for myself because um, I hadn't been to a needle workshop for years so now that I'm back into cross stitch I treated myself to a few patterns and some fabric which I'll show you later and yeah we had a really nice time it was very relaxing I think it was good just spending a few days just in Hobart it just gave us time when we weren't driving and tired all the time. It was good to just have that downtime. Um, 
so yeah so that's what we did and then when we got back because I have been unwell on and off over the last few months didn't quite know first I had a really couple of bouts of really bad chest infections and then I didn't really know what was going on and um, not long after we came back I think it was the week later um, I was working from home as I usually do midweek and um, yeah I put on a ro uh, sorry a stew to cook and I sat down and all of a sudden I felt really hot and like a like heavy breathing and then I felt like I was going to pass out and I had that about four times and I thought oh well because I'm on my own till Wayne gets home um, if, if I faint there's no one to help me so I called an ambulance and chuffed off there in the ambulance all dramatic like and um, anyway they were very good and took me to the hospital local to us and they looked after me really well um, they thought at first that I had a clot in my lung, so I had to have a chest x-ray, which I hadn't had done before. And then they always make you worry when they go, have you got anything there? And I'm like, no. <laughs> have you had any surgery there? No. And I'm like, oh, what's wrong with that? Anyway, they didn't say anything. And then I had the CT scan, which I don't like because it gives you the contrast dye and it makes you feel crook. And then at 2.30 in the morning, they said that they couldn't find any clots um, and so they sent me home so went home had a day of rest and then I went and saw my doctor on the Friday this was the Tuesday and then I went and saw my doctor my local GP on the Friday and I saw him yep no worries don't worry about anything it's all good and we worked out that the racing heart feeling and the and that um, was a reaction to my asthma medication. So I thought, oh yeah, all good, it's all over with. And then half an hour later, my GP rings me and says, you need to get to, the hospital rang and said, you, see, you have enlarged lymph nodes on your CT scan, which they re-reviewed, and you need to get to the local X-ray place and have a CT scan immediately, right now. So I had half an hour to get up the road, have a CT scan, again nice tw two days in a row sort of thing and then um, I had to see him that night so yes it confirmed that I had enlarged lymph nodes and I was panicking thinking I had cancer or something you know I didn't know so it was all scary anyway then he got me in to see a lung specialist because um, the enlarged lymph nodes were around my bronchial tubes in my chest near my lungs so he's he got me in to see a specialist, a lung specialist, the following Wednesday. The following Friday I had a bronchoscopy in hospital, which I haven't had a procedure done since I was a kid, so I was petrified. <laughs> anyway, they looked after me really well. Um, Holy Spirit Hospital was amazing, and the following Wednesday I got my results, and turns out I have a rare autoimmune um, disease called sarcoidosis which is where your immune system creates pockets of what they call granulomas, which is immune cells, and um, they can damage your organs and it, it can attack any organ. And it usually starts with the lungs and then it can cause dry eyes and all sorts of things. So anyway, um, I'm going to see an ophthalmologist in December because I have had a bit of dry eyes and um, my specialist I don't see till March next year and I have to have another CT scan before I see him and some more blood tests and a lung function test. So anyway, uh, they're not treating it at the moment um, because the treatment is prednisone and that causes its own side effects, which I really don't need right now. And um, we're just going to see how I go. Sometimes it will resolve itself on its own within a few years. Other times you need to have ongoing medication. So fingers crossed, mine's the one that buggers off in a couple of years and I don't have to worry um, so yeah so that's what's been keeping me away from podcasting I have tried a few times but it makes me very tired um, this autoimmune problem it causes extreme tiredness so I just don't have the energy and I had technical issues with my phone because I usually record on my phone Anyway, today I'm trying my brand new iPad, which I got for my birthday last Thursday. So, um, 
yeah, we'll see how this goes. I would like to say welcome to all of my new subscribers. I really appreciate that you've taken the time to subscribe and I hope you enjoy watching and um, I hope you enjoy um, coming back time and again. If you haven't subscribed, you can click below and there's also a little bell that will pop up that gives you notifications when I upload a new video. Um, I really appreciate that you want to listen to what I've got to say and have a look at my, I can share my craft love with you and and you know share my passion because I don't have anyone close that I can stitch with and so it's nice to share that with you. So let's get into the good stuff because that's what you're here for and um, I'll start off by showing you my update on where I'm up to with my oops poor pearl I just dropped the pattern the chart on pearl my cat I've got my stuff in her way oh poor darling sorry pearl sorry puss I had my stuff on her chair it's our chair but you know she claimed it it's covered in cat hair but anyway the joys of cats so I have been um, working steadily on my uh, map of Scotland with the tartan for the Farquharson clan which is my family clan uh, on my maternal side and as you can see I've got quite a bit done because last time I spoke if I just put this behind that might help last time I spoke I'd only just finished this bit and I think maybe started uh, a little bit of this bit so so yeah so since then I've done all of this um, which is the top part and now I've just started on page three which is to do the rest of the top half over here of um, Scotland and then I'll start working my way down and I'm really really loving the um, tartan pattern that's coming out it's really lovely I just love the colors I'm sorry the lights not the best here um, but I just wanted to get this podcast done so you you don't sit there wondering where I am, that I've gone AWOL. Anyway, so I'm really enjoying that, but it's taken a bit of a step back because I've come up with a new idea to do something for my nan. So that's taken precedence because um, it will take me some time to finish. But I will try and do a little bit of work on this every now and then just to keep it going because I really do love stitching on this. It is just so much fun and I love it. It's just variety of colours and I just love seeing how the tartan's coming out. It's just so pretty. Like when you look up close, you think, oh yeah, just blue and black and that. But when you look back, you can really see it come, come alive. So um, I actually recently got a um, pattern book, which I've left over there, so I'm not going to go and get it. But um, it has the Farquharson clan crest in cross stitch. So I bought a whole book of cross stitch crests. <laughs> Scottish crests and I only need one but anyway I'm going to when I finish this I'm going to put the Farquharson clan name and um, put the crest on so because otherwise people will just go what tartan's that and they won't know if I'm not around to tell them so yeah so I'm really happy with that I also changed to the smaller Q snap frame this is 11 by 11 it's just easier to manage um, yeah so I'm really enjoying it and I recently acquired this beautiful um, cross stitches of Brisbane uh, needle minder which has little pink diamantes on it and our logo and that's for my local group and we meet once a month at the State Library of Queensland so I really love it and I also got a mug a coffee mug that has the logo on it so I'm really happy with that too I always enjoy getting that one out so my other thing that I started was when I was, now, I've got to find the pattern, here it is, when I was at Sandy Bay, I went and got this pattern, Little House Needleworks, Sweet Shop, and it's just adorable, I just love it, I th there's a whole series you can get, so you could make a whole street up of, of them, but at the moment I'm just doing a small to practice, and I'll make it into a little ornament eventually, I think, for Christmas. And I got this fabric as well. This is oh, goodness me. I'll have to tell you at a later date. 
want to know what the name of the fabric is. R and R reproductions. Um, I can't remember what the actual colorway is. Anyway, it's um, 32 count linen, and this is how much I've got done on it. So I just started that because I had never stitched on linen before, and I wanted to see how it was and if I enjoyed it. And yeah, I really love it. The only thing I find hard is seeing the the little um, threads to count and yeah counting's difficult for me um, with my eyes but um, yeah I really love it and recently for my birthday my mum gave me some money so I put that towards buying an alt light with a magnifier so it is a game changer <laughs> it makes so much difference when I can have the alt light on um, I don't even need the magnifier because the alt light's so good I can really see all um, I can easily count where I need to go so that's a game changer so that's on hold at the moment I might do a little bit of it over Christmas um, but we'll see and my current um, whip I should have shown you my FO but anyway my current whip I my name turns 100 next June in June 2019 I can't believe it she's going to be a hundred and she still lives on her own and it's amazing and um, she gets a little bit forgetful these days but she's doing really really well and amazing to be able to still live on her own and have her independence at her age uh, where a lot of people much younger than her are in homes so um, anyway she lives down in New South Wales her name's Coral and she grew up in a little country town in New South Wales called Bogabri it's in western New South Wales and it's cotton cotton wheat sheep country um, so yeah that's where she grew up and then she spent some time down in Sydney and then Melbourne back in the 40s late 30s early 40s and then she um, met my grandfather and then moved to Newcastle and coincidentally he was from Newcastle on Tyne in the UK so that's quite funny and he came from Wall's End in the UK and they got married in Wall's End in New South Wales, Australia, in Newcastle. So there's a little bit of trivia. Um, so I wanted to do something for my nan and, it, you know, when you're 100, what do you buy? What do you get for your birthday when you're 100? It's really hard when you've had everything you ever want and she's blind or oh, she's legally blind and um, hard of hearing now. So I wanted to do something to celebrate her life so far and um, because a hundred years is a great achievement and um, I thought oh, I could do a sampler I've never done a sampler oh I did one myself a few years ago when about 20 years ago when I was younger but I just made it up as I went along and what am I doing again making it up as I go along so um, did I put in Oh dear. I'll just pause and does this let me pause? Oh, I can't work out how to pause it. Okay, we'll just keep going. I will show you. I'm doing a, I found a sampler online called the Australian Sampler 2 by Juniper Designs. I don't have the pattern here right now to go and get, um, but if you have a look on my Instagram, you will see some pictures of it. Um, I'm only taking the bottom part of the sampler off it, really, and maybe an emu or, so, yeah, probably just the bit at the bottom, which has a scene of bushland trees with a fence and a farm scene, and it's got a um, windmill. Um, so I'm doing that to represent where Nan came from, which is Bogabri, a country town. And um, actually, I might be able to find it on my phone quickly so I can show you now that I'm not using my phone to record. Um, let's see. Australian. Australian. Sample. Two. Where is it? I found the one that's the first one that's done in red. 
and it comes with all the thread so I will probably stitch the whole sampler at some stage down the track. Ay ay ay. Let me just put Juniper Designs. Ay ay ay. Why is it always that? Oh, here we go. So it comes with either Ada or Linen. I chose Linen and I'm using that for Nan's um, project. This. Oops, so that's it there. So I'm going to be doing this bit at the bottom with the birds flying and the little windmill and the fence and the bushland. So it's really cute. And then I'm going to make it up as I go along. So up the top, I'm going to do maybe an uh, like a half circle and like a decorative border around it and then inside it'll have a hundred years and then if I can down the sides if I've got room I'll put some wattle because that's Nan's favorite flower wattle is an Australian native and it's these bright yellow balls fluffy balls um, the flowers and it's really lovely but if you've got hay fever you got to stay away from it <laughs> which I would love to have a whole yard full of it but I get hay fever so uh, that's not going to happen anyway um, and then under that I'll put her name Coral Finlay Nee Smith and then um, under that I'm going to put her parents names her siblings um, Nan and Grandad and then my mum and her siblings and then all of us grandchildren and great-grandchildren all of our names just the first name and then um, around that I'm going to put some symbols that represent things that have happened in Nan's life so um, I was thinking I'll put a horseshoe because she used to have to help granddad with the Clydesdale horses I mean she was like less than 10 years old and her job, when he come back after being out in the bush all day with these Clydesdale horses pulling trees, they hadn't had a drink all day. And if horses drink too quickly, they can swell up and die. So they're frothing at the mouth and coming home desperate for a drink. And Nan's job was to stop at age 10, a team of Clydesdale horses from getting to the trough. I can't even imagine how intimidating that must have been to be a small child and you've got these ginormous Clydesdale horses and you're supposed to stop them from getting to the water and all they want to do is get to that trough. And then her other job was to climb up into the loft, knock out a bale of hay down for the horses and get in amongst the horses and cut the wire off it so that they could have their food. Um, but none of them stood on her luckily they always um, stepped around her which is amazing um, but yeah so I might do a horseshoe for that and then they used to always up in the country it was a big thing to play tennis that was a big social event and um, so I might put some tennis rackets and um, Nanny used to like go like to go dancing so I might put some like a couple dancing and her favorite dress was a yellow dress with red flowers so although I might not do the red flowers I might just do a yellow dress on the on the figure and then what else oh she went and lived in Sydney so I might do the harbour bridge just a simple version of it I'll have to chart it out myself and then um, she lived in Melbourne so I might do a chart out a series of three or four beach huts on um, Brighton um, and yeah so I'll just add a few little motifs around it to fill it in with different things from her life and I'll get it framed without glass and padded underneath so that she can have it on a stand low down and be able to pick it up and get really close to it or put it under her scanner and she can see it and feel it um, so she can enjoy it so I think that'll be something really special to capture and I think she'll really enjoy it so that's what I've started so I'll just show you where I'm up to so far and by the way I recently acquired this bag from um, made by Mama Joan in the US and it's gorgeous autumn fabric with pumpkins and sunflowers and a little ute or you call it a truck in the US we call it a ute um, for utility truck and little farmhouses and autumnal 
autumnal leaves, which we don't really get much of here in Australia because um, it doesn't really, yeah, we don't really have much autumn. And it's got lovely um, green fabric on the inside and clear plastic on the front. So, just to let you know, it's made by Mama Joan. And that's her details there if you want to head over to her Etsy store and have a look. She also does a podcast with Kelly Stadola. So it's the Kelly and Joan show. So definitely check them out. They're fun to watch. And Kelly, um, which I would love to get hold of one one day, maybe when the Australian dollar is doing better. Uh, recently it took a downturn. Um, because she does the Bitsy Bob, which holds your yarn like your thread while you're in the middle of working on something so it doesn't run away um so this is where i'm up to so far i've made a boo-boo so i have to fix it but yeah i just started the bottom border and just started up doing one of the trees so yeah so that's where i'm at that's the fabric i think it's 28 count or 32 count it might be, or 28 count, I'm not sure. And I just got the green, which I think the one I'm using is DMC 3345. 3345. That one. And I'll just put that on the floor. These are all the colours that I got to go with it. Oops, lots of colours. Um, I'll just, don't know what I'm going to use all of them for yet, but yeah. I got that for the wattle, which is triple four. I got black. I got this lovely blue 996 to use on the beach huts. 964 a real pale mint green another green 564 334 what else have we got 367 a different green I thought I might do three shades of green 368 for the names to show the different generations um, gray for the uh, 844 for the um, Harbour Bridge and the um, Horseshoe I got 327, probably for the, um, what do you call it, beach huts. And I got um, some pink and purple to use, and brown to use for different things. And then I got this lovely coral colour 3705 to put Nan's name in that because her name is Coral. So I wanted to do coral colour for her name to stand it out. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So we'll see how it turns out. And I've got till June next year, obviously. I want to give myself, um, get it done by the end of April, beginning of May, because I want to leave plenty of time to get it framed before we have to travel down to Newcastle for Nan's birthday, because I don't want to miss that. So I'll just put that back in my little bag. How cute is this bag I got from Spotlight, by the way? It's got little sheep, yarn ball sheep on it. How adorable. And it's got a cute little snap that is quite convenient when you want to um, make sure things don't fall out. So that's all my whips. Um, I will show you now one FO. It's not an FFO. I need, I'm slack. I need to get round to finishing it off fully. Um, it's a name tag to wear at my group. A few of the ladies in the group started making name tags for themselves, so it makes it easier. And I'll just put that other whip away so it doesn't get dirty. Okay, so my FO, I had a magazine I showed um, the last episode or the one before. Anyway, it had this cute little bicycle motif in it with a little butterfly, and then I just freestyled my name. Um, and I just used up where I had some leftover at the end of doing an old one from yonks ago, Christmassy one. So I'm just using up the end of it and I'll cut it off and back it with some bright yellow polka dot fabric, possibly, or whatever I've got handy. 
So if I fold that back in on itself, which you don't need to see that, here it is. So I just used some DMC I had in my stash, purple and mauve and brown for the basket and like a magenta pink, pinky with purple in the center for the little butterfly. So it's adorable. I love it. And so that'll be my name badge. So that's my only FO, I'm afraid. But something's better than nothing. Um, so now I will go into things that I have um, purchased over the last couple of months. I won't go into too much detail with them. I'll um, just grab them out and then I'll just quickly go through them and then at the end I'm going to do a giveaway so if you want to stay tuned for that I got something whilst I was on holiday in Tasmania and it's unique to Tasmania um, and I'll be giving that away possibly with some thread conditioner that I purchased recently so I might just show you the thread conditioner that I purchased recently that I will what's in there Oh yeah, cute. I got um, myself a needle minder from, have I got her card? She's in the UK. Uh, Chapel View Crafts, handmade polymer clay gifts. It's chapelviewcrafts.co.uk and that's her website. And I got a little needle minder and I also got a scissor fob, oops, which I think I have in here. Isn't this adorable? It's the little gingerbread house, a little gingerbread man with a scarf, how adorable. And check out this little cup of hot chocolate with little sweets inside it, little mints. How adorable. So I got that for myself. And, um, yeah. So. I'll just pop that away. Okay. So the thread conditioner I purchased from recently. Chesterfield Honey Beeswax. 100% pure Australian beeswax, organic and chemical free, natural and unbleached. And that's um, their details there, which I'll try and include below. And it's so cheap, I think it was under $10, including free postage within Australia. And I got these, I think I've got about six of these little discs of um, beeswax. And it's just pure beeswax, and I just run my thread through it once i tried twice and it was too thick so just run it through once and it conditions your um thread so it doesn't get twisted and knotty and it makes the thread sit nicely when you're stitching so i've started using that recently and i really like it so that'll be part of the giveaway and what did i get what did i get i got many things it's so exciting so I got the sweet shop at Sandy Bay at the Stitch in Time by Little House Needleworks. I also got uh, what's this one? Farmhouse Christmas Grandpa's Pickup. How cute is that? Can't wait to do that and make a little ornament. Um, I got Farmhouse Christmas, which is. Uh, little red barn with the cute little sheepies how adorable and the little cardinal we don't have them in Australia but they're very cute and I also got uh, sheep wisdom kindness that's adorable and it comes with the little um, blackbird buttons which are in the packet there somewhere I also purchased um, strawberry fields farm which is just a beautiful sampler like I just fell in love with the colors and I love strawberries and it's just beautiful so it shows them 
growing the strawberries on the farm, picking the strawberries, making them into um, bottle jam and whatnot, and then down at the little um, cafe having your little jam and scones. How nice. So that's really cute. So I can't wait to try that next year. I'll see if I can get that started. It came with the um, called for thread and the um, beads and I just need to get fabric to go with it. There's two others which um, I love as well. There's Small Farm Samplers. It's uh, Raven Hill Herb Farm and Jingle Bells Christmas Tree Farm which are just there. How cute. So definitely might have to purchase the rest because that is just lovely. And then whilst I was also at the same store, I couldn't resist and I purchased um, Carriage House Sampling's Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. And I just love this. We don't really celebrate Halloween. It's Halloween today, by the way. Um, it's after work, so I just thought I'd do my recording this evening. Um, and we don't do Halloween. Uh, it's not really a big... It's getting a little bit commercialised in Australia, but it's not really an Australian thing to follow. Um, but I do like the witchy stuff and the Halloween stuff nonetheless. Um, so, yeah, so I can't wait to do all of this. I need the fabric for it, and I think I'll just do it on DMC. So that's that one. And I recently joined the Facebook group, um, which has been really good for that. I can't remember the name of it. So, the last thing I purchased in Tasmania whilst on holiday was we went to um, a little town called Richmond, which is a historical town. And although people live there and there's businesses in the street, it's all in ye old little cottages and old buildings. And it's absolutely gorgeous. The little main street is tiny little white picket fence type situation and it's just beautiful and there's a bridge which is famous called the Richmond Bridge so the town was established in I think it was 1832 and I think the bridge was built in 1834 and um, there was a woodwork shop that we went to and actually I picked up oops, a few things from there including a shawl pin, but they also gave me this candle holder for free. So that's really nice. And it's in Sassafras, which is a tree grown in Tasmania. And it's called Sassafras, and that's handmade by someone local to Richmond. So I got that one. And then also in the store when I was about to leave, I saw this, and I thought this makes a perfect gift and it's, um, from our time in Tasmania to give away on my floss tube and it's um, this beautiful cottage it's an actual cottage that exists in Tasmania and it's called Cascades and it was built around 1841 and it's um, built in Cunha K-O-O-N-Y-A Tasmanian Peninsula and um, Cascades a convict outstation was established in 1841 and then by 1846, this delightful Georgian brick building was used for a hospital to care for nearly 400 convicts and their overseers and families. A mere 15 kilometres from the infamous um, Port Arthur, the settlement quickly grew and included a chapel, a rectory, workshops and offices and overseers. Um, oh, four offices and overseers. The stone quarries and timber cutting nearby were the source of the building materials and the inevitable cell blocks, cold, dark iron bars on the windows are still there to be seen for one to wonder at the hardships and loneliness of such a place. Today, the officers' quarters and overseers' quarters are peaceful havens for guests to ponder on the past, to put all into perspective and to enjoy the here and now. So um, the charming hospital building featured in this design can be admired freely from the roadside by the ancient oak. It is. It has been lovingly restored by Sue and Don Clark and is now their, their home, so privacy is paramount, therefore not open for viewing. Guests can enjoy the many interesting reminders of the dubious area in the museum, workshop and outbuildings, but better still, snuggle up by a cosy log fire and revel in the comfort and atmosphere of the delightful and authentic colonial cottages. 
This um, is series four um, from 1992 and the design is 14 and a half by nine and a half centimeters. And isn't that sweet? And it comes with the fabric and thread to do this. Um, and as you can see, that's where it comes, where it's located in Tasmania. Hobart is just down here and Devonport's up here and Australia sits up here. So yeah, so that's so cute, Cascades. So I'm going to be giving that away along with these beeswax um, thread conditioner. And all you need to do is to comment below. Don't say give away because we don't want people that don't care about cross stitch to get it. We want people who watch this um, floss tube who enjoy cross stitch to get the prize. So all you need to do is comment below and be sure to be 18 or over or have your parents permission because you have to give out your address if you win and just say oh, my favourite place to holiday is and tell me where your favourite place to holiday is. And then I'll do a draw um, next episode and reveal who won. And I'll post that out to you. So it's available to anyone. Uh, the competition's open to anyone out in the world, in international or Australia, whichever. Okay. And I may even, if I can find my other ones, I bought two lots of those needle minders, the gingerbread house. I might even do a separate draw for that one. So... Where would you, where do you like to visit when you're on holiday? Tell me. So that's that. So things I bought online recently. I shared, I, I bought this pattern twice because I sent one to um, Stephanie, Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching in the US. And Stephanie loves cats like I do. And sewing cats. And I saw Tina from Simply and Stitches doing this, and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I couldn't resist. And it also comes with a smaller version. And there's some completed ones there as examples. So it's very cute. So I got that. Don't know when I'll do that. That'll just go in the stash for a while. It might not be for a few years. Um, I also bought this Mirabilia cross stitch. Um, it's called the Stargazer by Nora Corbett and I absolutely love it not the fabric that it's sitting on and wouldn't choose that fabric but I'd probably get like I don't know a, one with sparkle in it and I don't know if I might change the dress to green and I'm not sure when I'll do it but I really love that so that's that one that I got recently and the last one to show you oh actually I had two others the third last to show you I got this beautiful sample I just couldn't resist the thing that drew me to it was this white house and it's Stacy Dash Primitives and it's seven and a half inches wide by 11 inches high and um, the call for fabric is R&R &R Reproduction Linen 30 count and I just love it. I love the house, I love the goat, the dog, the pot plant, it's just beautiful, I love these little white flowers. And it's called the Old White Farmhouse Sampler, Stacy Nash Primitives. And so that's the thread that it comes with, Classic Colour Works. So, so pretty. So I'm not sure when I'll get to that one either. But hey, plenty to choose from. So, once I get Nan's sampler out of the way, I'll be able to do all the things. So, some things I bought online recently from Etsy store, which was Homespun Elegance on, um, they're in the US on Etsy. They have really low shipping prices if you're in Australia, so that's really what drew me to it. As well as I love this, um, I saw somewhere on FossTube someone had done this sampler, and it just made me love, love it because it looks like I could imagine myself with Miss Pearl sitting, my cat Miss Pearl sitting underneath my chair whilst I stitch. So that's really sweet. It doesn't come with the embellishments, but I'm sure I can find some to add to it. And I just love it. So I bought that pattern. And oh, that's just the cardboard to hug between it. I also bought this um, 
pattern for cinnamon stick stocking number four, bringing you cheer and delight, um, designed by Sandra Sullivan, designs that reflect our American heritage number 238. And I just love the vintage look of it with the Santa in his sleigh heading over the little house with the smoke coming out the chimney. It just looks really cute. There's a finished object. And you can also, it comes with a pattern to do the pouch as well. So if you don't want to do the stocking, you can just do the uh, like Santa sack to hang on to the doorknob or the end of your bed. So yeah, so I got that one too. So I really love that. And the only other thing I got recently was I haven't seen Just Cross Stitch. It's an American magazine. Normally all of our Cross Stitch magazines are British. But I came across this um, autumn issue of number 22. Oh, no. It's the... October 29, 2018 issue. And I got it because we don't have a lot of autumn stuff. And I really liked the Halloween ones in it. I can find them. Oh, there's this cute pick girl picking apples. I really like that one. That's quite cute. Might have to do that at some stage. And then um, I really enjoyed, there was a really nice article on Scottish samplers. That was really interesting to read because I've got Scottish heritage. So I might want to do that sample later. And then the thing I got it for was these cute Halloween little quick stitches. Oops. I really love this little witch. Isn't she cute? Love the bright colours. I'm not usually a fan of orange, but I really like that one. And look at the cute cat with the bats. And I love this. Be afraid. Be afraid. Haha, <laughs> tish boom. Really like that. And just, yeah, really enjoyed looking at these. So I might definitely do that one. That one. That one. Mmm maybe that one so yeah very cute I just need to get some fabric to choose from I don't have any stash in regard to fabric so I have to get some different fabrics to do that on because I think that'd be really fun to do it on hand dyed fabric so yeah so that's what I got that from so my only other thing that I my gadget that I really like that I got recently is now let me just quickly check because I had the packet that it came in, in here. Here it is. It's the Graph Gripper Pattern Holder and it works brilliantly. I love it because I have trouble looking and then looking back at my stuff. So this way it just clips onto the top of my Q-snap. You put your chart in it, and then it's right handy there. You can bend it down, move it around however suits you, and then you can quickly just look up, see your chart, and go back to your stitching. So I really love that. It just fits quite easily on my Q-snap frame. So yeah, that is it all. So tell me below if you want to be part of the competition. Um, tell me below where you love to holiday and I'll draw that next um, podcast which I aim to not do um, such a long break in between famous last words but um, you know it was extenuating circumstances so uh, if you want to go in that competition definitely comment below and if you have any questions for me um, definitely ask away and I'll try and answer them on the next podcast all right till next time keep stitching have fun uh, don't do anything that you don't enjoy uh, in regards to stitching it shouldn't be a chore just enjoy it and have fun and I look forward to seeing you next time bye